Praise God, praise God. I'm Pastor Teddy Marshall of Word Fellowship Ministries. Now today's message is going to, oh wait, I gotta, gotta thank you all for coming back again and allowing me to minister the Word of God to you. Thank you. Okay, so I need you to like um, and subscribe and encourage other people to, to like and share these videos with you know in your in your life and in your camp who would need to be encouraged so just send them out forward them like subscribe comments and I respond to the comments so there you go all right so now the title of this message is partnerships beware and be mindful so I'm gonna read from Ezra chapter 4 now when the and don't laugh at me if I mispronounce these words and don't now you don't need to comment on that <laughs> okay Ezra chapter 4 uh, verse 1 now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the returned exiles were building a temple to the Lord, the God of Israel, they approached Zerubbabel and the heads of father's houses and said to them, let us build with you for we worship your God as you do. And we have been sacrificing to him ever since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria who brought us here. But Zerubbabel, Jeshua, and the rest of the heads of fathers' houses in Israel said to them, You have nothing to do with us in building a house to our God, but we alone will build to the Lord, the God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Then the people of the land discouraged the people of Judah and made them afraid to build, and bribed counselors against them to frustrate their purpose, all the days of Cyrus king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius king of Persia. And in the reign of Ahas Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, they wrote an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. And you can finish reading about you know that letter and what it said and all of that as you continue to read in Ezra chapter four. Now, it appears the Jewish leaders, their response uh, <laughs> to the men's offer was quite rude. However, when you are connected to God, he will lead you in the way to go in form of all the whom's <laughs> to accord to a company and or assist. You see, many come with ulterior motives. They actually come in the same spirit of conniving, lying, and deceiving uh, uh, just to steal, to kill, and destroy. Now, who does that sound like? The conniving, the lying, and the deceiving. Okay, I'll give you... I don't hear you. Yeah, the devil. <laughs> okay, the, these attributes and tactics are rooted in the spirits of pride, greed, and fear. Fear that you will advance farther than they, that you will gain and acquire more than they, and etc. These spirits are the same and come from the same source as what deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden and pressed Balak to entice Balaam to curse God's people but he could not as they were blessed by God. Now this is something that we should hold on to. We born again believers in Jesus Christ cannot be cursed. They can try and they will try, but we are blessed by God himself and he covers and upholds it all. Now God even said to Balaam, who are these men with you? Do not go with them. And you can find out more about Eve in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3 and Balak and his uh, encounter <laughs> in Numbers chapter 22. Now, when this group of Samaritans offered to join and assist the temple building um, when it was rejected, their true colors, their motives, their, their true intent emerged. One commentary, uh, John Gill's exposition of the complete Bible, states it this way regarding Ezra chapter 4 verse 2. Then they came to Zerubbabel. It, it breaks down um, different portions of that verse. Then they came to Zerubbabel and the chief of the fathers. These they addressed as knowing that if they could not prevail with them, they could never succeed in their design. And these were no doubt the principle of the Samaritans that applied that made this offer. See, their design was to stop this building and discourage the people. Next, and it said, and said unto them, let us build with you. That is the temple, let us build a temple with you. They proposed to join with them and assist them in it, which proposal at first might seem very agreeable and welcome and would have been so had they been sincere, but they were not. They hoped by getting among them 
to have sown discord among them and disunite them. See, there's so much power in unity. That's why the enemy works so hard to cause discord and discontent and foolishness within the church. Because he knows if we stand together and stand together on the word of God, oh my goodness, he's coming down. But he's, it doesn't matter. He's coming down anyway. Whoop, the wind's blowing. Got to catch you. <laughs> okay. So, um, so they work to dis, dis, disunite them. And so by these and other means to have retarded the building. Or if it went forward, that they might have a claim to it as theirs. That it was, you know that, that, um, well, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have. If it wasn't for me, you couldn't do that kind of stuff. All right, so. Um, so if it went forward that they might have a claim to it as theirs, at least as to set up their own idols in a part of it and, and corrupt the, the fullness of what God wanted. The reasons they gave follow. Next portion. For we seek your God as you do which was false. For they did not worship him, our God, the, the Lord God Almighty alone, but with idols, nor in the same manner as the Jews did. Which takes us to the next section. And we do sacrifice unto him. But even that could not recommend them to, could not recommend them to the Jews since they ought not to sacrifice even to the Lord himself. You know, God has strict rules. The priests did the sacrificing. There is a various reading here. The textual reading is, we do not sacrifice. That is, to idols. The marginal reading is, we sacrifice to him, which we allow. Either way, their hearts were not right. So, you know, I got a story for you. Here we go. All right, right after I published my second book, I started, I got call, started getting calls from these two publishers. And their offers were really, really great. And they were talking about all, you know, the, the royalties and what I would get and the marketing and all of this stuff that I would get. And it sounded really, really good. What they proposed was, was who you would think, oh man, this is really God sent. Okay, huh. But then the Holy Spirit had me consider the timing of the offer. I was in the midst of preparation and handling business for my big move. The presentation of the offer, fast talking with a lot of information. The tactic used in making the offer, pressure to decide right now, right now, this is what we have right now, and we don't want you to miss out right now. To get the most out of the, the proposition, I had to do it right now. Now I knew from experience um, to ask God if either they were from him, the offer was from them, from him, or if they were sent, you know, with their offer was sent by him to ask him if there is something he want, if this is something he wanted me to do. And if yes, was this the time to do it? So I did all of that and he replied, no daughter, plain and simple. Now God's no does not always indicate some devious person or agenda. However, as good and promising as it may be, if it is not of God for you, that makes it bad for you. Taking up the offer anyway will cause problems and can stagnate your God-established progression, can delay manifestation of his promises and blessing. He cannot, God, he cannot bless what, it, what is done contrary to him, his will, his ways, or his instruction. He can't bless that. There may be just enough gain to keep you going in the error way. The devil will allow that to continue drawing you away from your God-given purpose. And God being the great God that he is, he, he may, and he will permit limited increase to prevent his child from becoming destitute. Although there will come a time of accountability and if we continue ignoring his instruction and prompting to stop that and come away uh, unto him, we will put ourselves in the way of destitution and lack. Now, here we go. I know this was a whole lot, but this, let me give you the nutshell version of this message, okay? 
maintain as your lifestyle intimate fellowship with the father you know that's what i that's what i'm all about maintain as your lifestyle not an occurrence not when only something bad is happening or not even just when you need an answer as your lifestyle you do this to remain connected with him that oneness with him you do this to know his way to go and with whom to partner and include and whom to cut off and when because some people are supposed to start off with you, but they're not to go. They, that, they just have a time. They either have an assignment. They have a part to play for, that small part, and then that's it. We err when we try to take, oh, man, you know, they were right there, and they were so supportive, and it was right, and we want to try to make that a big, monumental, take me to the end kind of thing. And that, not that, no, that's not it. So God will let us know. Through that intimacy, we'll be connected to him. We'll know. He'll make sure we know. That um, maintaining that lifestyle of intim intimate fellowship with the Father also will help us to know the hows, the how-to, how to do it. We get, yeah, we get the plan, and we're like, oh, man, this is great. God's got this for me. I want to do this. And we run out there, phew, and we run out there to do it. But we didn't spend any time with him to find out the, the instruction, the directions of it. That all comes in the fellowship, too to be encouraged and empowered to follow through, to obey him in it all. When we spend that intimate time with him, we are empowered. We are empowered, even though, even if the, the change or the instruction or the strategies don't make natural sense, we will be so connected with the Father that we will be just encouraged. We're like, I, I gotta do this, I gotta do it. Doesn't mean you won't have a moment to be afraid and, or anything like that. But even in that, take Lord God, I don't understand it, or Lord, this is too big for me. Lord, what do I do here? And in that time, he's like, baby girl, baby boy, I got you. This is what you do. Go this way, go that way, not now, wait a minute, hold on, go, it's, uh, all of that. When we have him in our life, uh, when we're spending time with him as a lifestyle, this is what happens. So have, but let me tell you this, have no fear in stepping out in faith. Just don't do it without God's counsel. Even when we err, though, or stray, that intimacy with God will correct, will reveal his, his escape route, and love us back on point and into his momentum so we can continue in our purpose, according to his will, and all for his glory. God is a loving God, and spending that time with him in intimacy is just for us to be able to, just think about it, be in oneness with, with God. One is with the one who, all right, I'm gonna get, step aside from it so you can see some of these. Look at this, he created all of this, okay? And there's so much more. The rolling hills and all of the, the, the it just him. <laughs> and he wants us to be one with him so that we can um, tap into his creative anointing and expound on the creative anointing he has already imparted into us. And that creative anointing is not just so that we can plant some flowers and dig up some trees, but that creative anointing is for so many things, writing a book, painting a picture, um, business ideas, creative, witty inventions. All of this comes and is enhanced as we spend that time with God. So pick your head up, spend time with him and find out, Lord God, what's my next and how do I proceed? hallelujah hallelujah in jesus name and one more thing it would always that spending time with him will always ensure that all you do your attitude everything that you accomplish and acquire all of that is for his glory yes he'll have us to enjoy but we do it to glorify god amen that's all i have for you today praise god praise god have a good one see you next week bye-bye